Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Saturday. Got uh, another Amish q and I wanted to do. This time I got uh, Irvin Petersheim with me. How are you guys all doing? I'm Irvin, by the way. Grew up Amish. Now, who's your mom and dad? Uh, Chonai, Chonai and Fannie Mae Petersheim are my parents. How many was in your family when you grew up in the Amish? There were six brothers and then uh, four four sisters that that I grew up with. Well, there was another sister. She passed away when she was two and a half, and I never got to meet her. So, you have any twins in your family? No twins. No twins. No. Nope. So you say there was what ten of you then? Six and four. Mm, would have been. Uh, well, I guess it's seven with me. Like. You seven, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you had the same amount as we had in our family then. Yeah, it would have been 12 overall. Uh, like I said, the one passed away before I ever met her, so yeah. Yeah. So how old are you now? I just turned 31 last uh, in February is when I turned the big 3-1. I, I feel like 25, so I'm still in good shape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a young pup. Now, I don't remember much of you. Uh, you were very young when I left the Amish, but you grew up in uh, the same community, Kenton, Ohio? Yes, uh, I did. Kenton, Kenton Ohio. Uh, closed by LaRue, actually, but uh, yeah. But you, the whole time, you guys never moved or anything? I moved, we moved when uh, I was 17. We moved to Hillsdale, Michigan, which uh-huh. I thought was the worst place to live ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't even know you, your family moved up there. Yeah, we moved to Hillsdale, mm-hmm. Michigan. And then, well, I, I was living there a year and a half. Then I left the Amish when I was 18. And then after that, after my parents living in Hillsdale for two years, they moved to Marlette, Michigan. And now they're living back in MacArthur, where I currently live. They're about four miles from where I live, four or five miles from where I live. So, Was the other community, you remember if it was like a huge change, or were they very similar to the way the Kenton was as far as the Ortonung and the rules? I, I feel like they were very similar. I mean, the, the problem is, you know, you got to watch where you move because my dad was a bishop, and then... What makes me so mad, you know, is, or or I guess it, I kind of got over it now, but it, it's like you, you move somewhere and they shun you for moving there, which I think is the stupidest thing that, that ever was, because, I mean, this is another thing I looked at. I mean, you and, you can't use chainsaws in Canton, Ohio, but you and move down to MacArthur and use chainsaws, so... I'm like, you know, you're still under the same God. So so why is it all right to use it here and not and not where I came from? Don't make no sense to me. Are you saying they actually uh your community was shunning your, your parents for moving to a different community? Like like they would have let's say they would have moved to Marlette, Michigan right away, or let's say they would have moved to MacArthur. They would have shunned them for moving there. Wow. So, yeah, it it never made sense to me because it's a free ro- a free world. Right. And I don't see why you can't move where wherever you want to in, as long as in you're my opinion. Reading the Bible and have a relationship with the Lord right. and not have to worry about some following. So, would you say Irvin that you uh did you fear the church more growing up or did you actually fear God? I mean, I I fear God more because I still remember Mom saying like, uh, if if you do the wrong things that and and end up in hell, that the fire will be seven times hotter and 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 so I guess I kind of grew up fearing God more and 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 trying to do, uh, do the right things. So I would say it was more fearing God. I I never. As far as what the, what the preachers and stuff always said, I just felt like they were jealous. I mean, it it's kind of like I know a few people, you know, they see and they were doing good in, in business and stuff. And then all of a sudden they can't do this anymore because they're making too much money. So, so my thing is, you know, are they, are they worried about how much money someone makes or, or are they focused on what 
they need to be doing mm -hmm. because um you, you know if you're jealous of what other people have you're no better than the next person and if you go around telling people they need to do this they need to do that well you're no better than they are either yeah uh because you're basically trying to judge them and and my way of being it would be like well uh you know, like I say, no, you done something wrong, and I'd be like, come over there one time and be like, you know that that might be you shouldn't do that. You know that's not right, but you know if you want to do that, and they need to just leave it at that and keep on going with life, yeah, and and let Eli let Eli figure it out himself, yeah, because he he already know what's right and what's right. wrong, yeah. So uh, was you were you were not baptized then before you left the Amish? No, I I never was baptized. I was actually joining church. I had three more, three more uh, Sundays to go before baptism, and I worked with a guy, and he all he always told me. He said he kind of knew how I was. You know, I I was doing stuff I shouldn't as far as in the Amish. And he just told me, he said, he said, hey, if um, if you ever want to leave the Amish, you need to do it before you get baptized. So that's, uh, that kind of opened me up. And and then I was like, you know, that's actually a great idea. And I, I feel like that's why I left before I got baptized. And because I, I still remember... Uh, when I was in like, like seventh, seventh or eighth grade, I know my, my brother Eddie left uh, about when I was, I, I'd sing it was seventh grade. First, Benny Hostetler left, and I know Benny and Eddie used to be very close, and, and I always kind of looked up to them guys, and I, I never figured out why they left till, till later on, so... So it was always in my mind. I mean, I grew up, uh, and another thing that I always said growing up is kind of why I left is because, uh, you, you know, I I don't know, some reason I like Dutch. Is it because of the common sound or what it is? You know, people came around, they had a nice sounding truck. I just like the sound of the truck more than anything. So I always said, you know, uh, probably when I was in about eighth grade, maybe, I always said, I was like, man, someday I'm going to have a Dodge. It's going to be red. It's going to be a stick shift, yada, yada, yada. Well, and uh, and that's kind of funny now because I I actually got a truck like that, which it kind of caused me a lot of, a lot of money and a lot of problems, but a lot of lessons. So a lot yeah. of lessons are taught. So... That's kind of why I feel like I left the Amish. So you didn't have any uh, really huge trouble or anything, any abuse or anything that was going on? You just kind of wanted to get out of there and get you a Dodge, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, more or less. I, I mean, not, not abuse or anything. I just didn't like. The other thing I didn't like was they would treat some people better than the others. Yeah. And in in my opinion, it's like this. Whether whether Eli is better than me or not, I look I look at everyone the same way. It's not for me to judge Eli saying he's doing wrong. Eli knows what's right, what's wrong. And 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 you know and 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 so I'm not going to go around and tell you how wrong you are. I'm just going to you know, um, maybe sometimes people you don't like, you just kind of don't say much and and listen to them and, and just try not to be around that person if you don't like them. You don't have to start up something big or uh, bring all the hate out because, you, you know, I feel like that's what it is, you know. So many damage, there's always jealous of what these people are doing, what that person's doing and usually a, a jealous is they want to be doing the same thing but they don't have the guts or whatever to actually right. go do it they they want it but they don't i see carla says you should have been a ford right brother eli that's right i left for a ford but he went after dodge 
<laughs> well, I'll I'll let you guys stick with the forts. I I had here here just uh, in December. I rented a Ford at, oh, I believe it was at 350 and it's thing done a death wobble on me. Oh, really? I, I don't know if you know what that's, <laughs> what a death wobble is, but it's the front end. But uh, okay. any, anyways, yeah, it, it, uh, it reminded me I'll never buy a Ford, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my Ford has always been really good to me, that, so. That's good. Well, that you know, somebody's got to support Ford. <laughs> Someone has to support Dodge. J. Van Brown, what do you say there? Somewhere Some, on a back road on a quiet night, a Chevy. Is trailing a Ford. Trailing a Ford. I just know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the Chevy and the Ford are... Both trailing a Dodge with a toe strap on him, so. <laughs> I like that. Now, did you have your own horse and buggy and all that? You were probably in the youth group before you left? Uh, I was, but I didn't have my own horse and buggy because, so I I was 18 when I left. And usually it, my dad wouldn't give me a horse and buggy till you're 21. Kind of that. 21 is the age when you're like basically... They say you're on your own, but you you still got to follow rules, and they still act like they own you, so, so yeah. Um, there's a question from Misty Spencer Bradigan. Do your siblings, who are still Amish, allowed to be with you, riding your truck, etc.? No, they don't. They don't do that. Um, uh, they won't allow that. Uh, I know I got a brother, and I I go. My parents actually live with him, and I go to visit mom and dad sometimes. And I kind of quit because they don't they don't really want me coming out there, and they feel like it's uh, because of the kids. And and I'll just tell you this: when I was growing up, uh, see, Uncle Levi Slayball, he's my uncle, and I heard about him. You, you know, my mom would basically only tell the bad stuff about him, like uh, ch just a few of the things that I'm, I'm not going to bring it up. But she she always kind of talked like stuff kind of bad. And so basically trying to get me away from him, but it actually drawing me closer because I wanted to get to know the person. Uh, you, you know, you shouldn't judge... Uh, uh, well, what they always say, never judge a book by its cover. Um, but because he was an Amish, then she, they wanted to make him kind of shape into something that would scare you not to go follow that. Right. right. So so I feel like that's what's going to draw the kids. That's kind of what draw me to is because, you know, let's say I would have got to meet Levi and and, and all of that. It would have been more of a chance in me staying Amish than it would have been for me leaving because I knew the person. The only way I could get to talk to him was I'd, I'd, I'd have to leave or sneak to go see him. So, so yeah, I don't feel like, you, you know, if, if the kids are brought up right, I don't feel like that you will make them want to leave just because you're you're you left or whatever because the more the better a person knows you the better they know whether they want to follow a person like you or not follow a person like you yeah and you didn't really get to know him but you knew he was your uncle yeah but you you mainly heard negative things i oh, know yeah i even got word after i left that they preached about me you know that yeah. bad things can happen if you're not amish and you leave yeah you know you can be killed and it's just all negative about the ones that have left Oh, oh yeah, like like a lot of negative. I'm sure it was the same way when I left. I wasn't there to listen to it. So, <laughs> do you remember any like specific rules that you remember uh, that they were very against that you might have broken? And then, but since you were baptized, your mom and dad was held accountable. Yeah, and talked to? I, I mean, there's there's things I done. Like I said, there's a few things I I done. I shouldn't. I mean, I. I had to go apologize to some people. I mean, I I kind of done some mean things, uh, and and that was the other thing, you know. And some people knew I wasn't baptized, and they knew I'd do anything they'd ask me to, and and I got in trouble for some of it. But 
there again, I wasn't going to be like, well, he told me to do it because I've done it. So I'm not going to be like, well, Eli told me to do it. So that's why I've done it. No, that's not why I've done it. You've done it because your heart desired to do it. Yeah. If, if you would have been, you know, if you wouldn't have wanted to do it, you wouldn't have done it. Yeah, not throwing the other person under the bus, right. so to speak. And And the way I look at that is... God will take care of people like that, so I don't have to. That, now, that's group. just how I feel. Do you ever take a Bible to church with you? <laughs> I, I never took a Bible to church as as long as I remember. I mean, you go to church and uh, basically you, you see people's heads nodding and sleeping and, and sleeping and uh, and all that stuff. I mean, I can't say too much. I I done some of it myself before I knew any better. Uh, but no, it, it's, they, they never take a Bible, a Bible to church. And also they, they preach in German and, and shoot half the stuff. I didn't even know what they, they were saying. So, so it's almost, was almost kind of useless going to church because if you don't know what someone's saying, well, are you going to sit there and listen to him? So. Yeah. Now, I see Carla asked about my family. She, I've shared before where I'm not allowed to go be at my mom's funeral. She said, if she passes away, me and my brother that left the Amish were not welcome there. She's asking if your situation would be similar or would you be able to go out there? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, we went to some of the places <clears throat> where my grandpa passed away or my uncle passed away and we, I guess we never really talked about that. Uh, probably a no. You probably it, find out when it happens. Right, and it. and we we probably go out. Um, so I mean, we went out, and and they come up to you and be like, "Oh, you only come around when something like this happens," you know, uh, and and all of that stuff. So I'm like, it, it, you know, I. Honestly, probably the next time I'm just going to stay away because I'm going to make them want, like, I'm going to make them want it, you know. I just stay away and they're going to wonder what I'm up to. So I feel like if you stay away and just don't pay them attention, sooner or later they, they will want to see you. So so I'm I'm just, you know, I'm not going to lose sleep over it put it that way so one of the questions that came up uh last week from one of my listeners asked about do the amish get cremated and if they get embalmed now they always uh bury their body they don't they don't believe in cremation no they don't they don't believe in cremation no no they don't you you uh kind of want to explain how they uh, make the box they measure the body and it's just a wooden box yeah i mean I mean, basically, it is just a wooden box. I guess I never really seen it, but yeah, they uh, don't don't they use cushion though, Eli? Yeah, they do put cushion in her. Yeah, yeah, uh, put the, the pillow and stuff. Or yeah, but as far as the casket, it was just a varnished board. Just yeah, to, just a varnish varnish inch board or something uh, that they used to make the the yeah. casket. So yeah, I remember my dad's funeral. It was just it looked like a bear, not even a two by four. It was just uh -huh. like an inch and a half board yeah. and. You know, they would cut that out, measure the body, and lay it in. But it doesn't it didn't cost money like it would in, you know, out here where you go and pay oh, that oh, expensive yeah. casket or whatever. Oh, yeah. No, you're absolutely right. So Now, yeah. did you uh, do construction in the Amish, or did you was you mainly on a farm, or what was you doing? So so I I done, uh, I, I done worked on the farm for a while. I mean, I, I remember when I was like six, I was out there doing chores, milking cows, you know, and and doing that stuff, and uh, I'd i done a lot of chores, and we also hauled manure, and and we we done a lot of put hay up and all that stuff, and and I turned sixteen, which my older brothers always done construction, and okay. I still remember like it was today on on the first job I ever was. Um, uh, so I started doing construction when I was 16 and would have been uh, 2006 of May that I started. And and so so I started doing construction and the, the first thing was we, we built a house. We started from the, I mean, we'd done the footer and 
the whole thing. Oh yeah, the whole whole nine yards and. I hated it because they always got ahead of me on laying the block and you were supposed to keep up no matter if there were 10 people laying block or or 20 people laying block. You know, you were just supposed to keep up with striking and all of that fun stuff, but it, see, it taught me a lot. So Yeah, yeah that's how you learn. You oh, yeah. Go right. And so you say you did more construction or did you do more farming before you left the Amish? I, I've done more farming because I farmed till I was like 15 and then I'd still done some, you know, I took days off. Uh, yeah. And, and still done farming, which I didn't mind because if I was out plowing the fields, if, if I was out, uh, we call it dis, disting, I, I'm not sure what you call that. In, in the English way. Yeah. Uh, so, out work in the fields, I guess. So I always enjoyed that because I was kind of out by myself, do my own thing, kind of. Um, uh, so so I, I enjoyed that time. I really liked the plowing was really fun. Just uh, kind of unique how it, how it turned every, how it turned the third over. I, I thought that was cool and, and it was a, a very good lesson. I mean, you, you know, you go out there and harness six horses every morning when you plow, or you, you harness eight horses every morning when you're working the fields. Because um, we, we hooked them tandem, so they were like three and three or four and four. Usually when we plow, we had six, and then we had eight when we worked the fields with the discs four and four so yeah. they they wouldn't get as hot that way and you could you you could go go faster and I I was always I couldn't wait till I was able to go unload a load of manure by myself and all of that stuff and and I know dad done it a lot and and dad he would never get done as much as us boys would uh, I, I wasn't the only one working the farm, but I right. feel like always got kind of the short end of the stick because I had uh, like four older brothers than me. So Right. Now, so. did you guys have, uh, I know before I left, racing was a big deal. Oh. We were, was, <laughs> did you guys do a lot of horse racing? Uh, oh, yeah, that that was fun. Horse racing was fun. Every time you'd see a bucky, you, you'd have a fast horse. I, I mean, <laughs> that that was a blast for some reason. I mean, it was it was a trembling rush, um, trembling rush. So there's where is he from? I'm actually living in MacArthur right now. I I grew up in Kenton. Uh, I I've been living in MacArthur for about I don't even remember ten years or something. I forget. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah, horse racing was, was an absolute blast. I, I really enjoyed that, whether yeah. you were just riding a horse bareback or whatever. Uh, always kind of grew up in wanting to race this and that, you know, boys will be boys. So Kind of like an Amish NASCAR. With oh, horse yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> we actually had an accident when I was uh, just a teenage boy, about 13 years old. We actually had an accident. We were racing another buggy. And you're looking over, you're making, you see if you're gaining or not, you're yeah. watching the wheels. Yeah. And, and another buggy came from the front. Uh huh. And it was Henry Beachy. And we actually crashed head on into another buggy. And his, the pointy metal tip on the shaft uh -huh. actually went into our horse's neck and, and he bled to death. We lost that wow. horse. He was the fastest horse, horse we ever had. But accidents can happen too when you play, when you're out there yeah. playing, you know? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, I totally agree. Um, yeah, I I try not to do it too much anymore. I still do it some. <laughs> yeah, I've never had any accidents with a buggy flipped over or anything like no, that. No, I I never had any accidents like that. I mean, we had where where uh, that a buggy flip before. Um, I remember one time I was actually down helping my brother before I left. Uh, we was training a horse and. And I was kind of driving on the hill, and so we had this little cart. You 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 know the cart we had, Eli. Right. Um, so I was driving in in it, and I I promise you, I we completely. Well, I flew off the bucket, but the horse and the cart completely flipped around wow. because the, the the cart caught and it flipped. 
and it completely flipped around and and uh I was off the cart and uh, the horse he was on his feet the cart was on his feet and he just stood there <laughs> I to this day I always kind of felt like he was just like the horse itself was so shocked he didn't like it happened so quick he didn't even know what happened <laughs> he didn't know if he wanted to run or just stand there like what was that <laughs> right so so yeah i i that was a kind of crazy experience for me but other than that i never really had any uh experience as far as tipping a buck or what, right whatever so. hey, if you guys got any questions throw your questions up on there jennifer stover said do you you did you used to come to the plaza with david and sam yeah, yeah, I I used to come to the plaza with uh, David and Sam. Uh, I used to come up to Kenton a lot more. Um, uh, you could say back in my little wilder days when I done stuff I shouldn't have been doing, but uh, I feel like we all go through that and uh, we all learn from it, or we just continue doing it. So I I changed to I changed or. I learned to change from it, so so here's I kind of moved to uh, MacArthur because of work and stuff. So yeah, so yeah. Yeah, Carla said, "Did you get in trouble for the accident, Eli?" No, we actually didn't get in trouble. We don't call the cops on stuff like that. We just deal with it on our own, and we had to obviously clean up the mess, the buggy parts, and you know stuff was broken. And then also we would you know go bury the horse, and we took a, we didn't call the cops to do an accident report. Because there's no insurance involved or anything like that. So we just, we took care of it and uh, no law enforcement. You know, you don't have a driver's license where you don't get points on it because we we did something crazy or something stupid. So we, we don't have anything like that. Let's see here. I used to serve you, Jennifer. St she knows you. It's Jennifer yeah, Stone. I'm not, I'm not sure who it is, but. She was a server, I think, in the restaurant. There, yeah, so. I, shoot, I met so many people, um that I, I I mean there's people that know me that I don't know people so right and uh, you, you know I I've been out here it be coming up 13 years 13, uh, 13 years July 27th wow I, I still remember the exact date I I kind of remember I got try to like to think I got a good memory on some stuff anyways so. now planning <laughs> Let's kind of talk about that. If you, when you were leading up, ready to leave, did you have to keep it completely secret, not talk about it at all, or did you kind of let your parents know that you were going to leave the Amish? No, I I completely kept it secret. <clears throat> I mean, it it was kind of out of the blue because I'll be honest with you, like uh, I used to be very quiet. I I know a lot of you on here probably think me being quiet. Yeah, right. Well. Back then, I used to be I used to be very quiet because uh, here here's the thing was you you know you had to keep everything secret. So let's say I I know I've done some stuff that I shouldn't have, like hat radio or went to the neighbors to watch TV. So I learned to keep it a secret because depending on the person you you told. Would it it just spread like like the news media spreads, so so I was very very quiet because I didn't want people to know what I'm up to or you you know they had no idea so I just kind of did did my thing and I I didn't have to tell anybody because. I wasn't going to go around and brag, be like, well, I done this, I done that, like a lot of people do, and that's how they get in trouble. So I just, um, I, I know we, we, we left, I left a note there, and they, they, uh, it, it really was a shock to everyone, like I said, because I was so quiet. And and they kind of you know they didn't expect me to do something crazy like that or a lot of people. Where you leave? It, right. They where didn't I leave. That. And and they always said they figured my uh, brother Elmer would leave before me, which he was always a little crazier. And 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 later I learned why people like him would never make it because they leave for the absolute wrong thing. Mm -hmm. I left because. I more or less was just tired of it, 
uh, what I see, and they they'd always come come on my dad for stuff that he didn't even do, and 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 you know all that stuff. They never really tried to. They never really tried to help anyone. They never tried to make someone you you know help them better their life. It was they'd always look at all the wrong things you would you were doing, you know, you could do 10 wrong things and one and one good thing and you never hear about the good thing. Yeah. So and and it's still kind of like that to the, to to this day even mm-hmm. even in life it's like that, you know, like I always say I kind of preach more to myself to anyone else too. So uh so yeah, that's a little bit on that. So it it was a big shot for them and no they didn't see it coming. Yeah. Now, Paul said, I meant uh, you get in trouble by your, your dad, your parents, for that accident I described earlier with the buggy accident. That was actually my dad with the, the, the lines in his hand. We were, I was still young enough. We were, all, <laughs> we, were, we were all on the buggy. So I didn't, it wasn't me doing it. It was actually my dad that was in charge of the horse and buggy. We were all still younger. So he did it himself so he couldn't yell at nobody else but himself for having that accident and racing. Could you guys work on farms and drive tractors? Moses Bondrick is from a probably more liberal community. We did not have tractors. No, no, no way. We couldn't have tractors and work on a farm. I always thought it would have been nice if Dad would have just left for about a week and we would have hired <laughs> hired or rented a tractor and been like, hey, we're done planning and everything, you know. <laughs> so he'd come back home and all done. <laughs> yeah, but no, we, we never had that. I wish we would have, but, um, you, you know, wishful thinking, I guess. So, and Jennifer's asking whatever happened to Squirt. She's talking about uh, Bond Trigger. Yeah, he he is still he's still in Kenton outside of Kenton. Uh, he he actually owns his own roofing business. Um, oh, what is it called? I forget. Uh, Sam Bond Trigger Roofing, I believe. So yeah. I guess if you need a roof around here, you call him up. But no, he's still around here, uh, um, doing good as far as I know. So are you married? Uh, somebody asked Carla. Are you married, Irvin, and have children? And if so, did you marry an Amish girl? No, I'm not married. I'm, I, I don't even have a girlfriend. I'm single. Um, He's available, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> to the right one. <laughs> to the right one. Uh, so, no, I, I'm not. I don't have any kids. I, I just didn't get that far yet. So, so yeah. Holly Miller, I remember that night very good to the people just thought it couldn't be because you two were the first two that left. She's talking about you. They were sure surprised yeah. that you left. Yeah, I remember. I know we were the first ones to leave out of Hill still. And, and no, I, I know everyone was surprised. Um, I, I remember that night as, as plain as it was yesterday. I, I, we were just right down from our neighbors. We were a little crazy that night on on some stuff we shouldn't have been drinking. But uh, so so, anyways, we were actually in the singing, and we just got up and we we walked out. And and no, I I know a lot of people didn't realize it because, like I said earlier, that's how good a secret I I keep. You know is. Um, you, you know, I guess I look at it this way. You you want to watch what you say around some people because they'll just take it the wrong way and then then they just try to wreck your life. So I always put it this way, you know, support the people that support you and yeah. and, and treat everyone else like you want to be treated. It, you, you know, and be honest with people. My big thing is I'm probably one of the most honest people ever because if you ask me a question, I'm going to tell you how I feel, how I think, and whatever. So I guess my thing is if you don't want to know something, just don't ask because you're <laughs> going to get the truth. You're going to be honest. You, right? Whether you like it or not. So so you'd say, like, I remember trusting a few uh, in the Amish that I thought were my friends. <laughs> And then I would, you know, I'd have, a, I was sneaking around a radio and different things I knew that was breaking the Amish yeah. rules. And then they would actually go tell on me and it spread it. And then all at once before I knew it, I was in trouble. Right. You deal with that as well or? 
Nah, I mean, yes, we, we did some. I mean, that's kind of what I was saying, you know, like people trying to get me to do stuff. And and, and that kind of does happen. Uh, that's why I'm saying you want to watch who you hang around with. And, and usually for me is uh, it never went further than the people I hung out with. You know, we might talk about it later or something, but we would never talk about it depending who it was. If I didn't know if I could, I wouldn't even talk about it because that, that wasn't important and 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 they didn't need to know about it. And, and a lot of people, they, they just want to, they just want to, they're just out to get you. I mean, all yeah. they want to do is they want to see you fail. And, and you know, I, I don't know why they, they are like that. I mean, my thing is, you know, I like to help people out. I'd, I'd like to help yeah. people be successful in life or or whatever they want to do, you know. Uh, just just be there for the person. Yeah, and it's kind of like you said earlier. They seem to be looking at the bads only. And if you did one good thing out of ten bad, it seems like they focus uh, only on the bad and they don't really focus on the good. It, it seemed like they always wanted to go after you and downgrade you and to a pulp. You know, it was always the negative, so negative. Right. No, it it was like that and and uh, and and it was very negative and and that's that's just some of the things I didn't like was uh, was that. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm I I'm glad I grew up Amish. I I I like the work ethic I have and and all of that. It it's just that there's good and bad in every kind of people. Right. I don't care if you're Amish, whatever you are. There's still bad in the Amish. There's good in the Amish. So, so you know, it's. I feel like it just comes down more to jealousy than anything else. It, it's not, you know, this person's doing wrong. Well, they always go pointing fingers, and and then, uh, and and then they they don't see all all the three that right. are pointing right back at them. So right. I know I I had a lot to learn, and I'm not saying I'm better than anyone else either, because I know I'm not. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I seen Ricky Adams. He says, you know, sometimes when someone points out all the negatives, it brings out the best in you. Oh, I'd agree with that. Yeah, I I look say, at you now. He said, and what you become. <laughs> Rick, Ricky Adams, yeah. And there's Shelley Burkholder on there too. He says, "Hi, Urban and Eli. Thank you so much for sharing." A lot of people, they uh, they love these stories from the Amish because there's people that have lived around the Amish community, even in our right. community, yeah. that don't quite understand all that goes on. Right. I, I uh, Irvin, the other day I had somebody message me and they said, uh, I've lived around your Kenton community for a long time and they would come over for certain things and they would just open the door and walk right in without knocking uh, I guess that's kind of the Amish mentality. We would treat each other that way. We just come in, right? Yeah. Well, well, and I, I remember many times. Uh, I, I know my brother Eddie. Like a lot of times, they, they just have little things to say about his hair, and a lot of times, I'll, I'll be straight up honest. Is, uh, you know, a lot of times if they'd only say it one time. And they be like, and and leave it at that, which they just keep pushing the issue. So, so it pushes the person to to keep doing it more. I mean, it's kind of like if if anyone I'm gonna push to do something, the more they're gonna shy away. So what you're gonna have to do is, you you gotta show them where if they don't do it, they're missing out. Right. You, you you gotta change change it around. You gotta act like you don't need them, and and then when when they don't feel needed, that's when they feel like they're being left out, and and then it draws them in. Gotcha. So yeah, that's kind of how I feel like some of it should have been handled. But who who am I to speak of that? So. <laughs> Lisa Pez, she says, I think growing up in the Amish makes us all have better best work ethics yeah um, i mean they're workers i agree with that but i gotta say i i've seen a bunch of lazy amish too so <laughs> uh it, it, you know it's it's kind of in the person it's what someone wants to do and who they want to become i guess i mean i i do have a good work ethic i i like it i i love to work i always say 
my work is kind of like a hobby to me. I mean, if you love if if you if you love your job so much, it's like you never work a day in your life. So right, that's why I still feel this young, Eli. To uh, <laughs> that's why you still still feel this young. <laughs> well, I feel old, and I'm just a truck driver. Um, to uh, to wrap this video up, uh, the very last uh, topic here that I want to discuss in the recent weeks, I've had a a lot of uh, reports from different communities, not just our community of abuse and stuff like that. That's went down, sexual abuse, mental abuse, physical abuse. Uh, my dad had a, a, a bad side to him that I've shared before. You know, he was an alcoholic and he was very physically abusive yeah. to our mother. Um, as far as the abuse, when it happens, I know you, you said earlier, you didn't have a whole lot of abuse in, in your own family. And no. I, didn't, I didn't either compare it to some. Right. But Irvin, what do you think, uh, how do the Amish deal with those situations, how they forgive? And then there's no other consequences. If somebody's not truly repenting and not ready to change, you go, to, you go before the church and the church makes you, they want you to make it right with them. Right. Then it seems to continue. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it it does. Like they just say, you know, to forgive them and whatever. And and I know I didn't hear about a lot of abuse till after I left. And some of the stuff I heard, I was like, "You gotta be kidding me!" Right. And and here I thought they're good people, but as far as uh, as, as abuse, I guess even you know I look back to this day and. Uh, and I know somewhat changed me a lot is I I listen to to leadership books and it really helps me understand some. Just like I know my mom and dad, it seemed like they could never get along, and and uh, and I feel like that's very bad uh, compared to if you just think about it when you see your parents um, having an argument and stuff and. And then you're gonna be growing up in that, and you're you'd think that's the normal. So, mm -hmm. so when you get married, you're basically gonna do the same thing. And instead, they should be like showing the love more, like yeah. and and be a good example. I mean, you you know, from a young age, it is when you start learning because I'm I'm surprised that at this time. Or, or in in the world we're in now, I mean, some of the kids that are one year old, two year olds, I mean, you see a lot of them that have they're they're glued to phones or, and 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 so you gotta watch what what you do around them, even even the words you say because soon they'll they'll catch right on and and that's where it all starts. Yeah. It is even for me as a person now I I look back and I I see a lot of that stuff. So as far as the abuse, yeah, I mean, like I said I didn't hear a whole lot about it, but they would yeah, you basically they forgive them and and uh, no no one get involved in it. I mean, I like I said I heard I mean a ton of it. Be, uh, after I had left, and I mm -hmm. couldn't believe it, and I I know even uh, one one guy in particular, uh, I guess you know Phil Literary, right? Yeah, yeah. So so even one of his sons, what I heard he done, and and then then uh, Felly was always kind of you, you know bringing saying how good he is and 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 all of that. Well. Well, and and then it it just goes to show you it, it kind of bit him, kind so of putting you, on a good front, right? But and, evil things were happening, right? And and I always, always kind of said another thing. You know, some people think it's just horrible when someone leaves, and I'm like, you know what? I wish one of your kids leave. Now there again, that's the wrong attitude to have about it. But they absolutely don't understand it till their own kid leaves. Right, right. And and uh, and and I tell you one thing, you you know, they'd think that that for me not letting me go back to visit or or not or for them not really communicating, well what that's doing, that's just separating me more and more and more over the years because there's nothing there. When there's nothing there, I promise you no one will go to it. 
because you ain't got no purpose there. Yeah. Well, what's the purpose? You know, they say, they try to say all the good things, what happens when you come back. And and just the other thing uh, that kind of gets me, you know, I'm I'm not allowed to go, really allowed to go out and visit, but they can stop by my house anytime they want. So I, I never really understood that, you know, what's the difference whether I stop at their house or they come out to me. So well, They want to come out and try to get you to come back, Amish. But instead of pushing you away, if they would love uh, the ones that leave and would actually come and talk to you in a loving way where you feel loved, that's one thing. But trying to shun all the time the way the right. Amish do, it's pushing people farther away. Oh, yeah, like, uh, you know, if they come and ask me, like, hey, how's your day been? Are, are you staying busy at work? Or how are you, are you reading the Bible? Or or, or maybe some of that stuff, kind of looking for ways to actually help you in, instead of uh, ways of tearing you down. Right. Yeah. So, yes. so I, don't, I don't know. I mean, that that's kind of how I feel. Like I said, I, I'm not trying to act like I'm doing everything right and I'm I'm preaching just as much to myself as anyone else yeah. because we all got improvements right. to make and we can all do better at every single day. Uh, uh, one, I'm just going to share a little bit of a book uh, that I listened to was uh, so his saying when he starts out, he's like... Um, so there's if there's one thing that you can do every day that would make your life or can you do something a day that makes your life worse and and I promise you your hands will all go up and so let's say you know so if if can you do something every day to better your life so you know it it that got me to thinking because you know, I I always get better in life. Right. Uh, I I might not be able, I might not be able to change, change Damish Bishop or whatever. Right. But I don't need to change him. I can change myself. There you go. So I don't need to change him. I just change myself to look at him in a different way and respect him for who he is because he's going to have to live with his own consequences. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to have to live with him. So so that's up to him to, yeah. to choose whether he wants to change or not. Yeah, very well said. I like how you put that. Well, hey, well, I, uh, I'm going to wrap it up so it's under an hour so I can put it on YouTube as well. And uh, Irvin, I really appreciate you joining me on here and sharing me your story. Well, it it was a blast. Hey, thanks everyone for hopping on and, and you guys have a blessed day. See you guys. Have a good one. Peace out.